Life. And Representative, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Here's the thing. Republicans in your state want us to believe that this is a moderate compromise. It is not. What is the reality for women living in North Carolina and women across the South who may have prior used North Carolina as their last means of accessing care? Yeah, after Dobbs was decided last year, we saw over a 30 to 40 percent increase in patients coming to North Carolina because we were one of the last states in the southeast where abortion was legal up to 20 weeks. And so this 12 week ban is just going to be devastating for the women in our state and women all across the southeast who are coming to us. Um, the Republicans, like you said, tried to, to craft it as a moderate compromise. but. Every physician group in North Carolina, the OBGYN Society, the Medical Society, the Society of Family Physicians, all came out against this ban because they know how devastating it will be for health care in our state. It basically sets up an obstacle course for people to jump through so many hoops before they can even access abortion. So even though, you know, the Republicans say that it's legal up to 12 weeks, uh, they put so many obstacles in the way that it's really going to prevent people from getting the care they need. Right. I think about those 72 hours where you have to meet with a physician before you're able to access the procedure. And if you live in North Carolina, that may mean time off from work. If you live in another state, you likely, the majority of women who access abortion care in this country are already mothers. That means you have to find child care for the children you already have. It means you have to find transportation from wherever you are to North Carolina. It means you have to take at least three, maybe four days off of work. You have to find housing. Those costs begin to add up in a way that is it's just insurmountable for most yeah. working class, middle class women across this country. We know this ban is going to affect, you know, low income people even harder, you know, because of all those obstacles. And just so people understand the way that the law changed was that we always had a 72 hour waiting period in North Carolina. You had to be read a, a state mandated script before you were able to get care. And then you had to wait the 72 hours to actually receive the abortion. The way that this uh, bill changed that law is that now that script has to be read to you in person. And so that is such a big obstacle for people like you said, because instead of getting that script read to them over the phone, say if they were coming from another state, now they have to come to North Carolina to have that script read to them in person. They have to find a hotel or someplace to stay for three days while they wait for their next appointment. And then what's even more um, devastating is that for a medication abortion, they have to come back another time after the medication abortion pills are administered uh, for a follow-up visit. So all of these things are just going to be devastating uh, for people getting care in our state. I think an important thing to underscore here is that I mean, we're talking about a supermajority, but it is a slim supermajority that Republicans have. And one of the reasons they were even able to do this is because someone who was a Democrat uh, flipped parties, Trisha Cottom. I mean, have you spoken with her? Have you gotten a sense of, of what is happening there? I have not, you know, um, I have, I think the whole time she's been in the legislature this year, um, because she was served previously and then came back the session, I literally have had one conversation with her one-on-one -on -one since January. Um, she has kind of been apart from our caucus, I would say, this entire year. And so when she announced, you know, her changing to the Republican Party, a lot of us weren't surprised because she really hasn't been engaged with us this entire year. Now, I will say that when um, we we sponsored the Codify Row Bill earlier this year that every single member of our caucus signed on to. I did text her at that time and said, I hope that you'll sign on to this bill because I lead the charge on abortion in our caucus. She responded, yes, I'm going to sign on. And she did. And that was only a few months ago. So to see somebody, you know, completely change all their values and what they stand for was extremely disappointing. And, you know, it's just devastating that one person's decision like that can affect millions of people in our state. Quick last question to you. I mean, you've seen all the polling that I've seen. 57 percent of people in North Carolina support, support access to abortion. If anything, they want to see that access expand. How then do you get here where you have a Republican supermajority, a Republican-led state Supreme Court that is ignoring the will of the majority in favor of the wants of the minority? 
Well, I mean, for me, this is an issue I talk about all the time on the campaign trail. We know it's a winning issue for Democrats. Like you said, we know that the majority of North Carolinians support bodily freedom and women's reproductive rights. So we're going we're gonna to continue to talk about it. We're not going to let people forget, you know, the people who made those promises last year during the campaigns and then voted to override the governor's veto last week. Um, you know, I just, I, I know in my heart that this is not something that's popular with the people of our state. And even though we're up against, you know, a big mountain with the gerrymandering that we have, um, I still think that continuing to put this at the forefront of, of our campaigns in 2024, we have a really important gubernatorial uh, race as well. And so we're going to continue to talk about it. And we think that it's definitely a winning issue for our campaigns next year.